Hello, this is Sarah Tuberty, your host from Disarming Disability. Enjoy the following program on Public House Media. Liz Colburn here to bring you the launch of season two. We're already in season two. That is so crazy. Uh, It's beginning today and I'm so glad that you're here to listen to it, to join me and just the many hours that you all pour into tuning into the show and sharing your takeaways with me. My cup is so extremely filled up by you. And although the world is so unpredictable right now, I'm just thankful for the relationships that I've built and how this platform has brought us, you and me, even closer. And just the community that we're building uh, within this platform is just so amazing. So if you went and you listened to season one, it captured past trauma and the amount of bondage that can be in the lives of those who've walked through any type of traumatic experience in their life. Um, so this season, I really wanted to shine light on the relationships, the relationship aspect and, and learning what love is is through the lens of someone who had never seen love modeled in a healthy way growing up. So I literally had to relearn what it meant to love myself and love others and just give love and receive love and all of the layers that go into that. And it's a topic that continues to deepen as life progresses, right? We're all a work in progress. And so that love only grows in learning and understanding and relating to people and understanding how I give love and how I need to receive love and all of that. So we're going into all of that in great detail in season two. So we're starting this episode, season two, episode one, with uh, an episode called Daddy Issues. So I really wanted to hit on the fact that uh, a dad is a girl's first and most influential love, right? And if you have had a dad in the picture, if you haven't had a dad in the picture, I hope that this hits home in some way, shape, or form for you. Um, It can meet you where you're at, um, or you can share this with somebody else that you think that needs to hear this message today. But a daughter watching a father, uh, whether it's the way that he interacts with the daughter or the way that that father treats his wife or anything of that capacity, uh, it teaches that daughter about her worth. It teaches her about uh, romance. It teaches her about the way a man should treat a woman. And that lens is so important and so valuable in a girl's life. Fatherlessness is rampant in our society. And for me, I had no father in the picture. And for so many others like me, no father in the picture means that girls are trying to fill that void in other ways. I was one of those girls, and I've seen how it's played out in my life. I can pinpoint just what that looked like to not have a father example growing up. And it is very hard to navigate. So that's what we're discussing today. We're classifying daddy issues. Uh, and I, when I say that, I'm classifying that to mean women whose behaviors or mindset um, indicated that their father was either not a part of their life, they, were, they had an absent father, or maybe the father was there presently, as a physical person, um, but emotionally unavailable. So it could be either. And I just wanted to shine light on what some of my own father figures look like um, growing up at a young age so you can see where my lens formed from. When I was first born, my mom was married to a man that was not my father. And it was a very, very abusive relationship. And when I was a baby, I had matches thrown at me. I mean, we were held by gunpoint. I remember my mom telling me stories about how she would try to go to church on Sunday and uh, he would rip her pantyhose and, you know, tell her she couldn't go and just very emotionally, physically abusive, toxic home. That's what I was born into. And like I said, that wasn't my father. My mom actually had an affair. um, And the guy who was my father was never a part of the picture. And so I was raised in this abusive home for the first couple years of my life. My actual biological father had 
another family, had a wife, had kids, um, and just didn't choose me. He knew about me, but I was never invited to be a part of his family dynamic, and he never showed any interest in having me be a part of it. Um, and he did have another daughter. And, you know, looking back, it's it's hard to see that his daughter was his whole world, and I I wasn't chosen. Uh, That wasn't the path that God had for me. The next father figure, I guess, or the next male that was really a part of my life was my younger sister's dad, who was heavily into drugs and was always out for hours and hours and hours with my mom. And, you know, I saw sex and I saw drugs and I, I saw the abuse there too. It just wasn't a healthy relationship. And then I had another dad figure um, in my life who was really angry and he enabled my mom's behaviors. He enabled her addictions because he loves her so, so much. And all of those father figures or daddies in my life were all before the age of 10. And there were other like boyfriends that my mom had that were embedded into that. I'm not considering them father figures, but this was my lens. So, so this is where I'm coming from. These were all of the father figures, I guess, that I had before the age of 10. And it's really shaping, right? So I want you to insert right now what your dad looked like to you. And I want you to think about what he looked like in the image of your, your family. You know, what kind of role did he play? What was your relationship with him like? Um, and some of you are like me, um, or for some of you, you had a great dad and a great father figure, and that's such a blessing. Um, but some of you had a father that may have been in a category I listed or another experience, insert your own here. Some of you may have had a present father, but maybe he yelled a lot and he was really angry or had a good relationship with you, but not your mother or vice versa. Some of you had a father who let mom do it all. And so he was just kind of hands off. So insert your dad here, but just know that the bottom line is that whoever your dad was it did something to form the image of what love looks like in your mind. So that image of all of those father figures that I had and trying to come into terms with what love really looks like was ingrained in my mind as I plummeted into my teenage years because these were those formative elementary years that I'm seeing this all modeled. And now I'm hard charging into my teenage years and I just remember wanting love so badly from any guy who would show it to me. And I'm just being real with you today that I long for it. And I just craved it so badly. And I just ran toward it. I I got it. I burned it. There were so many shattered pieces of what I, what I thought love looked like all over the floor in my life. And it was such a broken journey, such a broken journey to try to figure out what love was. And that's why I wanted to talk about it in this season, because there are so many girls that have daddy issues like I did, and you're just longing to figure out and to navigate and not really understand what love is is and it's broken. And I want to, I remember wanting to date guys who did bad things, who used me, who abandoned me, who were abusive. And I just see in my mind, these similarities between what I saw modeled and what I wanted. And just in general in life, when I, when I talk to younger girls or when I talk to girlfriends who have similar pasts, or even you, when you email me, I see that what girls see modeled in a father is so important. And from my lens, I learned that love was messy, broken, and only brought hurt. And I began thinking that all men were the same. So in my mind, I'm just thinking all of these men are the same. It's never going to be different. And maybe you're there right now. You've been broken to your limit. You've been misused, defiled so many times you can't even see past it. Maybe you've grown bitter or just tired and you can't move on from it. And I've been there, sister. I promise I've been there. And I remember when I got to that part of my life where I got to the point of just complete, this is useless. Like, what am I doing? Basically throwing in the towel of dating or just guys, because I knew that they would all be in the same category. And I was just so tired. Someone told me a verse in the Bible 
that completely changed my life. And as I start reading this verse for you, I don't want you to tune me out because I know this is a verse that's very popular uh, and a verse that people have probably, or verses that people have heard before. So don't tune me out, but these are the verses that I heard. And it came from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. And it said this, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And here's the deal. When I heard those verses for the first time, my idea of love was the opposite, like as far opposite as you could get of that. I had only seen a love that was unkind and hurtful and egocentric and disrespectful and angry, so angry, or just a love that was holding mistakes over me or a love that walked away when things got hard or before I even had a chance. I was seeking a love that didn't want me back, a love that was conditional, a love I didn't trust, a love that was empty. So in general, my mind was just thinking, how could a kind of love referred to in scripture like this really exist? I was intrigued for sure. I was like, hmm, I want to lean into this, but I wasn't positively intrigued. (laughs) What I meant by that is I wanted to prove it wrong. I was so tired and I was so angry that I wanted to prove God's love wrong and put him in the same category of every other man that I had known in my life. But I couldn't. And once I tasted this kind of love, the love that came from Christ Jesus, there was no going backwards. I wanted more. It transformed me. It transformed that little girl with daddy issues so much. And not only my own view of love and what love should be, but it also made me want to have that representation of love by a suitable partner on this side of heaven. Well, I had finally gotten to my like last straw of I am done. And when I heard what love truly is and what it could be. And I started experiencing that type of love from Christ in my own heart. It began opening this part of my heart that I thought was lost for good. This part that I didn't think I could let somebody else in that I just didn't want anyone else to hurt. And equally important was having this person be an example that my kids would one day see. And I was so scared to be a mom. I was so scared to open my heart to somebody else, let alone be this mom of other children in this world. And now I'm just so blessed. I have a husband and I have two kids and I never thought I would see that day. Um, And people who know me now, that it's hard to believe for some people, but I was so angry and I was so stuck in these cyclical patterns of my relationships that I never in a million years thought that I could be a wife or a mom. So cue my wonderful husband walking into my life as I'm learning all of this, but it took so much time and uncovering layers and having lots of grace and lots of forgiveness. That's for sure. But I think life circumstances can sometimes cause us to question goodness and believe in this kind of love. But I challenge you listening right now to lean into your past hurts and the people who have scarred you and see how you can use these experiences for good to relate, to empathize, to give yourself and your family better than what you had. Something more true, something more everlasting. Trauma is not your excuse. Your father is not your excuse. Go ahead and insert whatever lie you're telling yourself. It's not your excuse. There is a love that's greater. And there is a life that's better than whatever hand you were dealt. And I hope that you're hearing me today because you are loved and you are so treasured and you can relearn what love is and create a new future, my friend. Here for you. Let's pray. Dear God, I come before you and I just bring all of these people who are listening to this podcast right here and right now, whether they had a father in their life or whether they didn't have a father in their life, whether they did have a father in their life, but he wasn't very present. He wasn't very plugged in or he yelled all the time or he had his other issues, God, or he, they didn't have a father at all. God, I just ask that you be with each of these women who are trying to be on this journey of relearning what love really is. 
they have may have had a really hard circumstance in their life or they may have had a past that led them believe to believe that they're unworthy or not good enough um, or they have to do something it's conditional i just pray that you would help them release those things in their their minds that they would let those things of their past go here and now that they would no longer bind to them that that wouldn't be a title or an excuse god that you would let that go in their life hand it over to you god Thank you so much for the gift of you sending your son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior to this world to be a sacrifice to us so that we can have everlasting life with you, God. But the life that we live right here in this world is a life that matters to you, that our chains can be broken, that we don't live in that bondage, that we can be the best person that we can be to honor and to serve and to bring you glory all of our days. God, I just ask that you have women who just turn their lives over to you, that love you more deeply and that want to serve you. In your name we pray. Amen.